By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are bringing you more magic from the Often Troll Cup, the online Swedish tournament. And this time we are looking at Ivo, who's playing with a deck called Trolls on Hollow's Eve. And he's playing against Walter, who's bringing a pink weenie brew to the table. Now, I'm really looking forward to do the deck decks on both of these decks, because they're quite interesting in, in different perspectives for different reasons. But I know that a lot of you also enjoy just going straight to the games. Now, you can do that by checking the description below. There you will find a timestamp that says MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to game number one. As for here, we are going to continue with the deck tags. And I'm going to start with Evo's deck, Trolls on Hollow's Eve. And here we see the deck of Evo. And let's take a look here. Trolls on Hollow's Eve, that is the name. And of course, it's named after the two cards. There are two copies of all Hollow's Eve that are in this deck. And the two trolls that we can find in this deck, four trolls in total, two different ones, the Often Troll and the Setch Troll. Now, Often Troll and Setch Troll, of course, go great with the Nevenerals disc. You pop the disc and then you regenerate the trolls. There's even a whole deck built around that mechanic, and that's, of course, called Disco Troll. Now, this deck has a lot in common with the Disco Troll deck because we see Rook eggs that go very well with Nevenerals discs. Um, but the interesting thing here is that he has combined this with the All Hallows Eve strategy. So All Hallows Eve is a sorcery from Legends. It's very special. You bring it into the game and then you get two counters and each turn a counter goes off during the upkeep. And when all the counters are off All Hallows Eve, all the creatures in every graveyard come back to life. So they return to the battlefield. Now this is quite interesting when you're playing with four chain lightnings like Evo is and also when you're playing with four Rook Acts because you kind of want the Rook Act to come back so you can sacrifice it again. And of course you can um, destroy it yourself using a chain lightning which is in this deck. You can use your Nevenerals Disc which is in this deck but he also has a Diamond Valley for example. Another interesting inclusion here I think is the Guardian Beast. Now Guardian Beast gives, gives all your artifacts indestructible as long as it remains untapped. So that means that when you pop your Nevenerals Disc the Guardian Beast gets destroyed by the disc, but the disc does not destroy itself. So that's quite interesting. So it comes back and you can then use it again. Um, and of course, there's that Guardian Beast Chaos Orb combo that's quite deadly. I also really like the Sacrifice in this deck. Sacrifice is a card, you know, you, <laughs> you just don't see that card anymore, but it's, it's really cool. So it's one black to cast and then you need to sacrifice target creature, hence the name Sacrifice. And you get the mana as black mana um, uh, equal to the casting cost. So, for example, you can use Sacrifice to sacrifice a Rook Egg. So you get four black mana and you also get, of course, a 4-4 four, four Drake at the end of the turn. That's quite important that, to remember with the Rook Egg is you don't get the 4-4 four, four token straight away. You get it at the end of the turn. Uh, but that's really nice. What I'm kind of missing in that sense maybe is a drain life because i always like that uh, combination of sacrifice and drain life because sacrifice specifically says that it gives you black mana so that's always quite quite interesting but um it is a, a cool little little thing and of course you can use sacrifice in combination with a fireball or a disintegrate you know with his x spells but he could also use it to try to cast an early triskelion for example you use sacrifice on um one of your rook eggs then you invest one black mana, you get four, four mana back, and then you only need two extra mana, for example, from a soul ring or a mana vault to start casting your trike or cast your tetravis. So that's quite interesting as well. Okay, so here we see the deck of Evo. I must say I'm really excited about this brew. It's always cool to see nice and original decks, and I think this is one of them. Um, so really cool. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Wouter. And here we see the pink weenie deck of Wouter. Now for the people that don't know, pink refers to the colors red and white that are in this deck. And when you mix them together, exactly, you get pink. Um, the other thing we see here is some smaller creatures, but not as many as you might expect in a weenie deck. Weenie refers to playing with a lot of smaller creatures, kind of using a swarm strategy to win the game. When I'm looking at this list, it reminds me a little bit of a Sly list because he's playing Savannah Lines as a one drop, then his two drop is the White Knight, his three drop are the beautiful Thunder Spirits, a full play set, and then there's actually not a four drop in this deck. 
Um, and then he goes straight to the five drop, which is a full play set of Sarah Angels. Now a four drop in a lot of these strategies, especially the weenie strategies, is the Armageddon, one white and three to cast destroys all lands. We don't see that in this deck. So Valter has really chosen a different strategy. This looks more like a kind of a mid-range build. He's also playing with Blood Moons. So instead of, you could say instead of uh, Armageddon, he has chosen to go for the Blood Moon and kind of control the game with the Blood Moon and then um, destroy his opponent that way. I really like the one single Sheevan Dragon in the deck. It's kind of like this commander that comes in, you know, you still haven't won the game. Okay, I'll fix it for you. And then you slam your Sheevan on the table. Uh, and you still take the victory. Now, obviously, because it's red, we also see a lot of direct damage. But what are we missing in this deck? Exactly, Lightning Bolts. Valter has decided not to play with Lightning Bolts, which I find very interesting. He is playing with four Crusades. I would almost consider if I would be Valter to take out the Crusades and play with the Bolts. But I do like... I do like to see people that are taking a known strategy and are trying something else. So he's not doing, you know, the land tax... Uh, uh, Armageddon uh, um, uh, strategy. He's, he's, he's saying, you know, I'm going more more slime, more mid-range. I am not going for bolts. Uh, in, instead, I'm going for, you know, for the Crusades. I'm going for the Blood Moons instead of the Armageddons. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting deck to look at. Also, in the sideboard, I see two Preachers that, you know, maybe I, I would have played main. You know, they could have been a good four-drop alternative. Um, but I, yeah, like I said, I like it when, when somebody does something different. So we're just going to see uh, how this strategy will, will work out for Wouter. Let's go to the games and, uh, and let's see how this will unfold. Game number one. We have Evo sitting on the left with his uh, Trolls on Hollow's Eve deck. And we've got Wouter with his Pink Weenie deck sitting on the right. And Wouter gets to start here with a beautiful unlimited plateau into a Zavanna Lines. Two ones. It's a great start here for Wouter. Let's see what Evo can do. Batlands and a quick bolt there on the Savannah Lines. And there is a second white dropping a Crusade. So that Savannah Line would have been really strong now. That would have meant three damage for Wouter. Unfortunately for him, there was that quick lightning bolt. There is a Mana Vault. What is Evo going to do? Just passing turn here. And maybe that's an interesting discussion. Would you cast the Lightning Bolt straight away like Evo did? Or would you wait? There's a Thunder Spirit now at 3-3 because of the Crusade. Or would you wait with the Bolt and do it after he declares his attack? Because that's, of course, something you could do as well. Tapping 3 here. There's an often troll. Oi, 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 as they say at this tournament. 2-2, two, two, 1 red to regenerate. But it doesn't fly, so there's another crusade. This is brutal. 4-4 four, four flyer now. Evo going down to 16. Bad news for Evo. What Evo really needs here is one of his Nevenero's discs. And there he's tapping the mana vault, and there is a Nevenero's disc. And that is good news. And now hope. Uh, let's hope for, for Evo that Wouter doesn't have a disenchant. Untaps first, draw for turn. If he has a disenchant, it's all over for the disc, of course. Now first attacking, Evo going to 12. It looks like he doesn't have it. He's just passing turn here, not playing any extra pressure. And we see Evo going to 11 because of the mana vault. He's probably going to attack and wait until Wouter's turn to do anything else. Or, okay, so I guess he's... Popping the disc in his own turn. That means that he does have a second main phase now to play out his spells. But he just passes turn. Interesting. So we see Evo doing quite a lot in his own uh, in his own turn. Where I would have personally decided to just pass a turn to Valter and do that later. I would have done that with the Bolt and with the Nevenrolls disc. But of course, I don't know what cards he has in his hand and that may influence his decision. Here we see a Blood Moon. I mean, it can be effective um, against Evo, but not that effective because he also plays with a lot of red, of course. It does block his black mana axis. And there is a Sarah Angel for Wouter. Remember, he's playing with a full playset. There is a Rook Egg. So again, Evo is kind of under pressure. He needs to get rid of that Rook Egg. 
And here's the attack of Wouter. So four more damage. That means Ifo is dropping to seven. Quite low here. Is he going to cast another? There's a second Sarah Angel here hitting the board. And there at least is a Swamp maybe that can do something here for Evo. I feel like he needs to find a way at least to destroy his own egg. And no, he's saying I'm not going to win this anymore. It's over. So that means the first game here it goes to Wouter. Very convincing, convincing I must say, with... Uh, just too much pressure on the board all the time. And both these players are going to go to their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. And it looks like Evo is keeping his hand. We see Wouter shuffling there. So does that mean he took a mulligan? We'll just have to see when he takes his uh, first seven again. There he goes. Let's see if he puts a card on the bottom. If not, then it's his... Yeah, he does. Okay, so he took a mulligan. He's down to six. At least he's on the draw. There's a Mountain by Evo passing turn here. There is a Basic Plains pass turn. So both of these players don't have a one drop. Look at that. Evo doesn't even have any action in turn two. So very slow start for both players. There is a White Knight for Wouter. So that's some pressure. And I do like that first strike against those trolls. And there we see a set troll. Now remember, it's still a 2-2 because there's not a Swamp in play. So... Evo needs to play a Swamp here to make it a 3-3. Tapping two more, but no lands, it seems, for Wouter. Attacking with a 2-2 first striker. Missing a land drop here, and that could be quite painful for him. He has four Thunder Spirit at uh, three casting costs there, but he can't play them out. There's a Nevenrose Disc. And if Evo can find a single Swamp, that Disc option is looking mighty fine. Attacking here with both White Knights... That means Evo is dropping to 14. So again, early pressure. Oh, I look, I look at this divine offering here. That means four life for Wouter and the disc is gone. That's very good business here for Wouter. Very good play. And maybe this is giving him the victory. He's already had one game. So that would mean the match. And, you know, Evo has to, uh, has to do something here. Possibly cast a Rook Egg, because that would be, at least be a good blocker. There's a Diamond Valley. That would be nice, playing a Rook Egg now, using it as a blocker and then end of turn. Okay, instead he's using the Strip Mine here. Now remember, Diamond Valley doesn't tap for colorless mana, so... This, uh, it's not looking great here. Will we see, yeah, there's a Lightning Bolt. Okay, that kind of fixes part of the problem. So that means Ifo is on 12. Finding another mountain, so no swamps or any black source here for Evo. And playing another Nevenerals disc. Is he actually going to pop the disc to get rid of a single white knight? Well, you have to do what you have to do, right? And at least with the Diamond Valley, he could get some life back with his uh, Setch Troll. He's going to drop to 10 here, untapping, drawing for turn. Finally finding that swamp. That's something. Now the Setch Troll has turned into a 3-3 with regeneration. So this is really good news for Evo. He could still... I guess you don't want to pop the disc now anymore. You want to keep the disc. You've got control. I guess you want to keep your Setch untapped. Tapping 2. There's a Demonic Tutor. What is he going to look up now? And it looks like this game is now turning... Where we see Wouter, who's still on 20, but only has one land in place. So if that White Knight leaves the board, he has nothing left. And the White Knight is not looking as good anymore as it, as it used to. Now that that Swamp is in play, and the Setch Troll has turned into a 3-3 creature with regeneration. Attacking here is going to drop to 17. And there is a Wheel of Fortune. This is a risk by Evo playing this wheel because your opponent is stuck on land so he's now going to draw into land again on the other hand evo still has the nevenerals disc but he doesn't have the mana to activate it i mean if Wouter can find a second white and a disenchant to get rid of the disc let's see there's a plateau what else can he do here attacking with the 2-2 He's dropping to eight. And there is a soul ring. 
Tapping for three. There's that disenchant I talked about. Nevernerl's disc out of the picture. Evo's on eight. But remember, he does have a full hand after that Wheel of Fortune. And now he can start playing it out. And of course, with that Diamond Valley, he could always respond to some direct damage by sacking his own Setstrol and at least gain three life. You don't want to do that. But does he have a Rook Egg here? That would be really nice. There is a Rook Egg. And that is actually perfect. He can sack the Rook Egg, gain three life, and then also get a 4 4 flyer at the end of his turn. So that would be kind of ideal. Choosing to pass turn first, interesting. Wanting to keep his options open here. Maybe concerned about a Swords to Plows here from Wouter. There we see tapping four here, using three mana to cast a Thunder Spirit. Now remember there is no... And at the end of his turn he's sacking the um, Rook Act to the Diamond Valley, gaining 3 life and a 4-4 four, four Flyer in return. And what I wanted to say is because we're playing according to the Swedish rules, there is no mana burn. There is a Chain Lightning on the Thunder Spirit. Thunder Spirit gone. Attacking here with the 4-4 four, four and the 3-3. Three, three. <clears throat> and there we see a Swords to Plowsiers. Okay, probably on the Flyer. Oh, on the set troll, interesting. Going on the set troll here. So does that mean that Wouter also has a Sarah Angel maybe in hand to block the 4-4 flyer, choosing to get rid of that very annoying uh, regenerator set troll. And look at this animate dead on the rook egg. And another set troll. Interesting, by the way, is that what Evo also could have done, or was his Diamond Valley tapped at the time, is in response to Swords to Plowsiers, use his Diamond Valley to sack its Setch Troll. That way his Setch Troll would be in the graveyard and not removed from the game. I think that would have been a possibility here. And Wouter's now looking at the board state. I'm really liking this second game, by the way. It's very exciting. Both players are very much in it. We see Evo on 9 and Wouter on 10. There's a lot of interaction and things happening back and forth. And of course, the problem here for Wouter is the board presence. Only one white knight. Okay, two white knights, Wouter. Have <laughs> it your way, man. But I don't think it's enough. It's not looking very, very solid. Again, a sec here. And look at the Diamond Valley doing work. I mean, he's really gaining a lot of life, which is great for Evo, but a, a problem here for Wouter. You know, Wouter uh, almost had him. But now he's all the way back to 17 life. That's kind of crazy, right? And Wouter is stuck on 9 here. And he has two 4-4 four, four flyers. And there is a ball lightning. This is game, I think. He can block the ball lightning. Uh, because of the first strike, it's not going to deal any damage. He can block the sedge. And then he still takes 8. So he ends up on 1. Oh, look at this. Interesting. Interesting. So he, Okay, so he's playing a Swords on a Rook token. He's blocking... A Bull Lightning with the White Knight. Because of the first strike, the Bull Lightning is not going to deal any damage. So he only takes four damage here. That's actually quite good. So he ends up still having five life. I mean, it's looking really bad for Wouter, but he's not dead. I thought this was game, and it's absolutely not game. So Evo, you're not there yet. You're almost there. Look at his life total just going up and going up. Playing an Afton Troll. Oi, oi, oi. There is the 2-2 Regenerator that this tournament is named after. And Wouter saying, okay, man, this is it. <laughs> he was probably hoping on a balance or something uh, from the top deck. Didn't happen, but that does mean that it is a 1-1. And this was really a nice match. So thank you, Evo and Wouter, for this, uh, for this game, I should say, because the match is not over yet. Let's go to game three and let's see who is going to win this confrontation. Game number three. So this is the decider. Who is going to win this matchup? Will it be Wouter with Pink Queenie or Evo with his All Hallows Eve troll 
combination. We haven't seen All Hallows Eve yet, so that would be nice, Evo, if you could cast it here in game number three. It looks like both players are having quite a slow start, especially for Wouter. That's uh, unexpected with four Savannah Lines and four White Knights, but he's not finding any of those. And there is a Chaos Sword by Evo, followed by a quick Disenchant by Wouter here. Let's see what else he can do. There is a Hammerheim, three lands. That could mean a potential Thunder Spirit. There we see the Thunder Spirit, 2-2 two, two Flyer with First Strike. Beautiful art, a card from Legends. Let's see what Evo can do. You're tapping out for a Fireball, hitting the Thunder Spirit out of the sky and into the bin. It's out of the game now after the Giant Fireball. Another Thunder Spirit perhaps by Wouter here. No, there is a Blood Moon. That means that all the non-basic lands in this game are turning into mountains. So that means that Evo no longer has the strip mine, but a basic mountain. And he doesn't have access to black mana anymore. The Badlands is also a basic mountain. He is able to play out a Rook Egg. The O3 creature from the Arabian Nights. When it dies, you get a 4-4 flyer at the end of turn. There is a Preacher from Wouter. Interesting. This card is coming from his sideboard. There is a Diamond Valley, um, but remember the Diamond Valley now is actually a mountain because of the Blood Moon, so that strategy is not going to work. Normally you want to do Diamond Valley, sack to Rook Egg, gain 3 life and get a 4-4 Flyer in return. He cannot do that now because of the Blood Moon. Interestingly enough here is that he is casting a uh, Nevernerals Disc and that is very interesting. So Evo is trying to sack here, but he can't because of the Blood Moon. But I think it's actually better for Evo that he, that he cannot do that. It wouldn't have been a good move, actually. Because what would have happened is he would gain 3 life and would get a 4-4 flyer. Next turn, Wouter would steal that 4-4 flyer. I think this situation is better because if Evo gets to untap with his Nevenerals disc, he can pop the disc, he can destroy the Blood Moon, he can destroy the Preacher, he can destroy his own egg that's stolen by the Preacher, and he will get a 4-4 flyer in return. So actually things... Are looking pretty good right now for Evo. And I mean, Wouter, you need some action against this Nevenerals disc. Let's see what's going to happen. So it looks like it's still Evo's turn here. Now he's passing turn to Wouter. Wouter is playing a Crusade. Interesting choice with that Nevenerals disc on the table. Does that mean that he has a Disenchant to follow up? Passing turn here. Interesting choice playing out this crusade. Is he doing that to try to convince Evo to just use his disc, get it over with? Looks like Evo is kind of in a tank here, considering using the disc. It is looking mighty tempting. I mean, you get rid of four permanents on the side of your opponent and you get a 4-4 flyer back because that Rook Egg is going to Evo's graveyard. So that means that Evo will get that. I, th I think at least that's the case. I'm starting to doubt now because because Evo is not popping the disc, so maybe it doesn't work that way. Anyway, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll watch this unfold. Yeah, there we see the disc pop, and now we'll see. I do believe Evo is getting the the four four. Interesting choice to use the Diamond Valley for that, and I do believe the Enchantments still need to go as well here. There's another Nevernerals disc. And yeah, exactly. There the enchantments go. Then he's gonna strip. Is he is he stripping? Yeah, okay. <laughs> he's stripping the plateau. It's kind of hard to follow here. Oh, and look at that. Wouter is actually getting the the four four flyer. Okay, so another thing learned here. So the four four flyer is going to Wouter. Attack here. Evo dropping to sixteen. But with that other disc, it does make sense. He can just pop the disc. There is a Badlands. Let's see what he can do. Nice. There's a Bow Lightning hitting Wouter for four. So he's going to drop to 14. Probably going to wait with popping the disc until it's uh, Wouter's turn here. And there's the attack. Is there the disc activation? And yes, there it is. Taking care of the 4-4 flyer, but now Wouter can start perhaps playing a exactly a Sarah Angel, playing with a full playset. And it's difficult for Evo here. I mean, he had to use two discs to kind of get out of that situation with the Preacher. Finding another disc. Okay, and now the disc is just kind of a very expensive way to, to sort a creature. 
And Valter will just attack, put in four more damage, probably do nothing else. And, um, yeah, passing turn here. And is Valter going to pop the disc? Yes, he is. So there the Sarah Angel goes, and he's playing another, interesting, another Bull, uh, bull Lightning. That means Valter's going to drop to eight here, so he has to start to be careful. And you see him going through his cards. I think maybe he has his swords here. The problem is if you swords a Bull Lightning, you give your opponent six life. And the ball lightning is going to go away at the end of turn anyway, so it's 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 tough for him. And he probably wished that he just had a white knight on the battlefield because that's the perfect answer to these ball lightnings or a thunder spirit actually, just a creature with first strike. There we see a set troll being a three three because of those two batlands. Vouter on eight here after taking two hits from a ball lightning. I mean he was doing great, but just those two ball lightnings have completely changed the situation. He's not finding anything. Oh, another bull lightning. Oh, man. That means it could be game here. I'm expecting Valtier to have some kind of swords or something. Attacking for nine in total. Then the question is, is he going to swords the bull lightning or the set troll? If he does the set, he'll drop to two and be vulnerable to chain lightnings and lightning bolts. And swords going on the bull lightning here but that that's not that's not something you want to do but he has to do and let's see what's going to happen okay Wouter deciding or Evo deciding to use his diamond valley which is a good decision it means it goes into the graveyard and not exiled and the situation now is that Wouter is on five Evo is on 15 and three cards in hand there for Wouter. Is there anything useful? And there is a Disintegrate, which is actually quite nice because um, the Setstroll cannot be regenerated with a Disintegrate. So that's much better than a Fireball in this case. And okay, an Ashnaut's Altar. Not very interesting at this point in the game. And there is a preacher from Wouter. Interesting. It's going to be difficult for Evo to kind of navigate around this preacher. It's just such an annoying creature. You just want to <laughs> want to kill it when you're playing against it. It's really nice for Wouter. I think it's a very good inclusion from his sideboard. Attacking right now with the preacher. There's an enemy dead. Oh, honorable lightning. Will this be victory for him? Is this the way he's going to win this game? Remember, Anime Dead gives a minus 1, minus 0, oh, so it means it turns into a 5-1. Not quite sure what they're talking about. I would just get that ball lightning and start ramming. Oh, he's actually considering going for a Rook Egg. Why would you do that? Interesting choice here. Maybe I'm missing something. Absolutely possible. And there is a Disenchant. On the enemy dead. So how does this work? Can Evo? Yeah, Evo's getting a four-four flyer. Okay, so I guess I guess it was a good decision. Oh no, of course he can now steal it. He's gonna eat it. Oh man, this this game is getting complicated. I think if I would have been Evo, let me know in the comments below. I think I would have taken the risk of just getting that ball lightning out there and just give it a try. I mean, if he wouldn't have had the disenchant, he would have won the game. Anyway, he's gained some life at the end. And he's on um, 18, it seems. And Valter playing that White Knight, so he can start putting a little bit of pressure on. Attacking here. Evo dropping to 16. Very interesting game number three. And I mean, I think Valter, he just really wants to gain some life here because you're playing against a player who's got red, just like just like Valter actually. So you're afraid of Fireball, Disintegrate, any direct damage. Five is such a low number. Playing a Savannah Lines here. Passing turn. So Valter's kind of building up an army here, building up pressure. And Evo knows that all he needs, okay, that's, that's a start. Playing a chain. On the life total of Wouter and playing another chain, that's game. <laughs> yeah, that's you know that that's probably what's going to happen when you're that low. But of course, you want to give it a try and you want to see 
how far can you take it? And maybe, who knows, maybe he doesn't dry into that burn and you win the game. I think this game really showed what we already knew, and that's that Diamond Valley is an extremely powerful card in, in the sense that it just buys you time. Life gain is buying you time. And every time your, your opponent takes care of one of your creatures, you can say, in response, second to Diamond Valley, at least I get some life for it. So every time you get something in return, and usually your opponent loses a card to get rid of one of your creatures. Uh, we did see that that preacher did some amazing work in that game three. I think it was a very good decision, decision from Bouter to board that in from the sideboard. I would even consider playing that main, maybe even dropping two Sarah Angels and playing two two Preachers instead. But I also like the, the idea of, you know, I'm just going to go for a full play set of Sarahs and at least I'm going to see one of, uh, of my Sarahs in every game. I, I do understand that philosophy as well um, anyway another great match from the Ufton Troll Cup so I'd like to thank uh, Ron for organizing the tournament I'd like to thank Ivo and Walter for being willing to play on the stream and um, having their match being featured here on Timmy Talks uh, as for uh, you guys thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. If you like what you see, you can easily support the channel by becoming a subscriber. If you're not subscribed yet, you can also leave a like, leave a comment, all that helps. Share it on your socials if you enjoyed this matchup. Thank you, thank you for that. Also, you can click a notification bell to let YouTube know that you really care about what happens on my channel. All that being said, there's one last thing that you can consider and that is becoming a patron of the show that really helps and how can you become a patron it's quite simple click on the info card that's appearing right now that will take you to timmy talks patreon page and check out how you can become a patreon and support timmy talks talking about patron and patreon let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic amazing wonderful channel members and patrons of timmy talks what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor Ich kann das Ficket zu Sumba gesehen.